Well, here it is. It is a 53 Plymouth Cranbrook. It's got a flathead six cylinder in it. Pretty good looking patina on it. Paints almost all there. Besides a little bit on the doors over here, back quarter. And then this door over here, it's got some peeling going on. Which I'm curious, <clears throat> I'm curious to see uh, how this paint comes out with the buff. Just to see. But the uh, left front and the right rear are frozen and will not roll. So I'm gonna hook it up to this tree over here and try to just drive the trailer out from under it. Luckily this trailer does tilt, so I should be able to just drive and when the weight gets back it'll tilt back. But with these wheels crooked I'm not sure how straight the car is going to go back. I have a feeling it's just going to want to turn sideways because that's what it was doing to us when we were pulling it up. So I'm going to set this camera down over here and just see what happens. That went a lot smoother than I planned on. Both front wheels started rolling again, but this uh, this one was rolling before. But I don't think this one over here was rolling because it looks like it just slid down the trailer. I'm gonna clean off the trailer deck real quick, put the trailer away. Drag this jack out here. Let's see if I can't get this front end up from the cross member. Alright, now that we're up off the ground, it's 
much as I could at least. My jack's not really making it go any higher. Let me see if we can get these hubcaps off and pull these wheels off. Let's see what we're working with. I've never seen hubcaps that screw in with machine screws. I thought for sure these would be like quarter turn screws or something like that, but apparently it's machine screws. Surprisingly enough, these wheels look pretty dang rusty. Like almost like they're starting to rot. Hello spiders. Sadly, I'm out of PB Blaster, so WD-40 it is. Just get everything cut. Let me get back in there. Got a little hole right here. I'm gonna go around and take the other hubcaps off real quick and then spray everything down before I start taking these apart. All right, let's see what size these lug nuts are. They look like they're about a 19 to me. Uh, three quarter, I guess, since it is an American car. <clears throat> uh, what, three quarter? Yep, first try. Those are not happy. I think they're reverse thread because that definitely just got tighter in there. They are reverse thread. The more you know. That's strange. I have never seen reverse thread lug nuts and I just ran that one almost all the way through the wheel. Oh yeah. Surprisingly, it came off. Let's get these other wheels off before it gets too dark and starts raining. It is supposed to rain the rest of the day today and pretty much most of the day tomorrow. But I'm going to try to do what I can. Try to get this thing in the shop so I can work on it some more. These ones are not left hand thread. This is weird. I'm sure Chrysler Plymouth guys would have already known that left side has left hand thread, right side has regular right hand thread. This thing's not even lowered yet and it won't give me the wheel. Come on. It's probably because I have the jack stands on the axle so there's weight on the suspension. I don't really have anywhere else where I can lift it from. I guess I'll try to get some weight off the rear from the core support. Good morning. Today we got some new uh, PV blaster and some oil and brake cleaner and stuff like that. So I can go spray this thing down and get it uh, lubed up so I can get the brakes free. I sprayed it all with WD-40 last night, but I don't think that's going to do much. So I'll get some good PB blaster in there. <clears throat> Hopefully we can get these wheels rolling and find some wheels and tires that hold air. So I can get this thing in the shop and put on the lift.
because I definitely do not like working on it out here in the wet grass after it rained all night. Give everything under here a little spray because I know I'm going to be working on it. I've never even seen suspension like this before. It's got like double A arm, but it's got like a kingpin set up. And the shocks over here on the side, and the steering arms go all the way across, and each one connects to the uh, to the pitman arm super strange setup I've never seen anything like it but like I said I haven't worked on a ton of old stuff so this could be fairly normal for something this old I don't know but I will figure it out and do whatever I got to do to modify it I'm just spraying everything. Anything that looks like I might be taking it apart or touching it. Just to make my life easier later on. Get this hood up again. It's got a strange hood latch on it. That, uh... You press this lever, like push it, and then this lever you pull afterwards. Kind of different, but lube it up. Um, let me get this up here, and then I want to just spray the carburetor because I know I'm gonna mess with it. This nozzle, the nozzle's leaking. Get everything soaked up so it's easy to work on. It's already starting to rain a little bit on me. Let's see if I can get any of these tires to hold for me. Leaking out of the valve stem. It looks like it's full of water. Have much faith in these other ones. It's actually taken. It's 
see if this one will take any. Oh, this one's shot. It looks like these things have freaking tubes. Oh, it's taking air. Okay, I got the wheels or the brakes to come loose and spin. I just put a pry bar or I put the lug nuts in the drum. Like you can see back here. I just put the wheel studs in there and then used a pry bar and turned it and broke it free. They're still very stiff but loose enough to where I think I'll be able to move the car. So now before I put it in the shop, which I need to clear out some space. I think I'm going to go through and clean this thing out so I don't take all this turds and spiders and everything into the shop. Got the big rivets bumps or rivets, yeah. And that big ass like locator. That one, yeah. Hmm. We'll see. I would just run these wheels. Like I said, I think it looks cool with the caps. Just put like a nice tire on it. Yeah. Huh? Take off. It's picking the front wheel off the ground. Is it really? <laughs> it's like jumping. <laughs> the crown broke a knocking. Or a rock and don't come a knocking. <laughs> looking fairly even. Right? Yeah. 
right? That rod that I thought was the choke is the uh, clamp. Easy enough. That's good. Not all done. Got all the linkages and stuff. That's what we want is a first fire and a fucking stuff all. I don't think it'll stick. It seems pretty good. Yeah. Watch well, it to choke. There's actually an input But on the back I can see it. Oh, that's a fucking tricky fucking method of that. on and just spin it from the fan. You want to fucking cut yourself up and more than that sharp shit. two different sizes.
to zip tie it for now. I'm just let it dangle. Fucking dirty dangler right here. But we have technology. What Patrick? We have technology. Spark. I had one spark. Put them fucking plugs back oh, in. Yeah, they clean all of them. No. Clean the plug again. Put all them motherfuckers you back in. You crank fucking six rotations and have one pop. Yeah. It's a six cylinder. Today we're going to pick up the uh, extra car that came with the 53 Plymouth. So I'm just going to get hooked up to the trailer here and then we'll head out that way and I'll get some clips of us loading it up on the trailer because it might be a bit of a challenge. If you want to go, baby, just think down in the edge of Well, there's where it sits. Gotta get it strapped up and see if the winch won't pull it out, otherwise I'll use the truck.
Okay, so what I did here, I took the coil off my uh, out of the parts pile for the Porsche because it's a 12 volt coil. Ran the one wire to the distributor down here, the other red wire up to the hot, which is actually the negative on this car, and then put the other one to the ground, which is hot. All right, so I got the coil hooked up, everything 12 volts. Well, only thing 12 volts is the starter and the coil, and I put a 12 volt coil in it. So I'll put a little bit of fuel in. Let's see if it'll fire up. Let me get my clamp for my camera here. Probably a little more than I need, but we'll see what happens. It's trying. I'm gonna say that's a win, but the uh, carburetor definitely needs to be gone through. Definitely need to go through the carburetor, pull it off, and then uh, I'll try to get this fuel feed set up to like a little gas can or something to run off of that. Because the fuel tank in this thing needs to come out and uh, get taken over to the shop to get fixed. So for now, I'd say. That's pretty cool. Got the motor unstuck. Well, I guess it wasn't really ever stuck, but it was definitely tight. Didn't want to spin very well. So we soaked the cylinders with ATF and PB Buster and took all the spark plugs out and ran it a bunch. And then uh, I couldn't get it to fire off the 6 volt battery, so I had to rig this up with the 12 volt jump pack and get that to work. And I got it to fire, and hopefully it's free enough now to. 6 volt will be enough to turn it over but I think I'm gonna have to get in here and replace these cables that are just showing uh, bare wire everywhere and all these wires are broken so I'm gonna have to go through all of it but for now I'd say that's a win for just hearing it run and uh, yeah this is the nicer one of the two cars I picked up this one's gonna get built the other one's kind of just for parts. It has a few parts that are nicer than this one. Like, I think the steering wheel off the other one's in better condition than this one. The seats are about the same. The front looks fine. It's not torn or anything. And it actually feels, like, strong. It doesn't feel super brittle. The back seat, on the other hand, it is destroyed. And it's got some type of cover on it. But, uh... The floors don't seem to be terrible on this. I might, I'm might i going to pull the seats out and see how bad the floors are. So maybe we'll make some videos for placing floors. Or maybe we'll just clean it up and put 415 on it or whatever we need to do. 
And this thing definitely needs that muffler taken off because it does not make enough noise. So there it is. Now we just got to imagine it about six inches, eight inches lower. With some fresh steelies and hubcaps and some dime whites. Or some other wheels I haven't decided yet. With the crazy uh, lug bolts and all that. I don't know what I'm going to do. But this thing will be fun to work on. At least we know it runs and the motor's not junk. So I can clean up the wiring, get it running proper, get a right, get a proper gas tank in it. And then uh, start working on the suspension after we get it driving. And I'm really curious how this paint will come out with a buff. And try to clean it all up, see how nice it'll be. Because all the paint looks pretty complete, it's just... It's so dull from sitting in the sun for years. My curiosity is killing me. So I'm going to take a little spot of this uh, compound here. It's the Sweet Patina Century Polish. I used this on the 58 when I tried to polish it. But that one was just way too far gone to bring anything back. So I'm just going to try a little spot over here by the headlight and just see what happens if I just buff it by hand for a second. Not bad. Definitely gets the shine back to it. It's not a perfect paint job underneath, but it'll be good. Compared to this. Now just imagine the whole car. Well, I think that about does it for this video. Nice little introduction for the Cranbrook. So let me know what you guys think I should do to it. Whether it's just polish it and get it running and drive it, or lower it, or do air ride on it, change the motor, leave the flathead six in it, and then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Have plenty of videos to make and whatnot building it. And then maybe in between there, we'll get back to the S13 and pull the turbo manifold off and fix it, because it's cracked. And then maybe some videos of all the go-karts and stuff. But first thing first is I gotta organize this freaking shop and get to it. Because there is stuff everywhere. So first things first, I'm going to get the shop cleaned up. And I'll see you guys in the next video.